Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is officially, well, I guess not the end, but approaching the end of day five of the UK trip. So, Muscle Works graciously feeding me, supporting the bulk with a uh, meal of chicken and rice. A very rare conventional bodybuilding meal for me, but nearly 100 grams of carbs, 50 grams of protein. I'd say that's freaking perfect. So, me and Samson just finished a chest day. Now, he was giving me some sweet posing tips, just a totally different approach. But uh, that'll be on the Hostile channel. So until that comes out, you're just going to have to wait. But solid lift. He was, uh, I was gonna about to do my typical real heavy, like 150 pound dumbbell bench. And I did a few, but he was, uh, he was taking me through a totally different style. He was more like lighter squeezing reps. I mean, insane pump. So you gotta remember, taking tips from somebody like that, super experienced. I'm definitely gonna, my ears are gonna perk up. I think I'm still a little closed minded when it comes to my training, uh, because I know I like what I like, but I mean, listening to Olympia competitors about how to train, they've definitely got some solid knowledge. So I do want to broaden my horizons. And I think kind of breaking away from my typical training habits, and especially actually lifting with these guys, it's definitely gonna help me do that. But I don't know what we're gonna show next. We'll, I'll probably just cut to the Airbnb or whatever food we end up eating. Uh, but yeah, solid chest day. So I haven't weighed myself yet. I was much better this year, or well, at this expo than I was at the one in Columbus because I had way more meals during the day. Uh, I made the mistake of not really packing any food when I was at the, uh, the Columbus Arnold. So I had like a small breakfast, full day just standing around talking. <coughs> and then an underfed lift followed by a big dinner certainly not conducive with uh, you know, bulking up so I'm not sure what my morning weight is I'm definitely not too far from 260 though I can tell I'm a little lighter just because I mean I definitely have not been hitting my 5,000 calorie goal per day but I've definitely been pretty close the last few days I've been at like <coughs> About three and a half thousand, four thousand, so a little less than I would like, but you just gotta roll with the punches. So next week, after a full, you know, few days of actually, <coughs> oh, sorry about that. After a full few days of actually eating my meals at home and not having to do it, traveling around, I would not be surprised, and I would definitely be happy waking up in the morning at like 263, 262-ish. Uh, but you gotta remember, when you're bulking up, you are full of carbs, you are full of water. It's not like I've gained 30 pounds of lean tissue throughout this bulk, right? Because I was around 230 at the start of it. But you gotta remember, as long as the scale is changing and you're not putting on too much body fat, there is lean tissue being deposited. So, you know, don't get too discouraged if you start to lose your abs you're losing some bicep veins it's just part of the process but they're filming a podcast live in the gym that'll uh i'm not sure when that'll get posted but i'm just gonna finish my meal play on my phone and then we can cut to probably whatever i eat next because there's no more training today oh that was chest and i uh, i tell you what i cannot wait to go home and sleep but i'll see you in a few seconds. All right, so a substantial amount of time has passed. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what time we finished the lift and we got McDonald's afterwards, but it's fucking nighttime. So I didn't really, eh, I don't know, I mean, I took like a four hour nap. My sleep schedule is totally boned, so it's like, I'm, throughout the day, I do get like eight, nine hours of sleep, but it's like sporadic. The traveling is definitely kind of messing with me. I, uh, 
I really got to get back in a normal sleep rhythm. Uh, but I'll focus on that when I actually get back to uh, the States. Well, I don't think I need some water. <clears throat> Yeah, so the chest day today, it was really good. Samson, he was really prioritizing squeezing reps to the point where, you know, I'll usually talk about heavier hard sets and then lighter squeezing sets. And for the most part, I go heavier sets and then decrease the load and squeeze towards the end. But he was really hyping up even just squeezing sets from the beginning. And of course, you know, crazy pump, but what do you expect from doing, well, I guess if you want to see the workout, just watch it on the Hostile channel. But yeah, pretty good. I'm definitely excited to get back to a regular routine. Boom. Having a fully stocked kitchen all the time. And it's like, I don't mind it. It still works. But I am getting a bit tired of um, all the prepped meals that we've been eating. Because just plain chicken and rice. I mean, it's just not incredibly appealing to me. Well, it's fine. I'd really like some barbecue sauce or something. That would make it a little more palatable. But I think I'm just being a baby for complaining at all. So, plan for tomorrow morning is go back to Muscle Works. Uh, is, we're having a whole meet and greet noon to four. It's, um, it was ticketed like it's, it was ticket only. So I think all the tickets are already sold out. There may be a few stragglers. You'd have to look at the, uh, the muscle works Instagram, the one in Orpington. But you know, if you're not already like within a 20 mile radius, you're probably not gonna be able to make it, but don't worry. I'll just pop up where you least expect me. So plan for, t well, I guess technically today, but basically tomorrow it's hamstrings. Not my most glamorous lift, but I think it's good for me to split up hamstrings and quads. I think I'm going to have a better time, at least with the quad training, because I'm not so pre exhausted with having already worked my hamstrings for like 30, 45 minutes. I'm already real sweaty because squats, leg extensions, it definitely takes a lot out of me to the point where I think I'm kind of limiting myself if I am pre-exhausted beforehand. But then part of me thinks maybe I should just do quads and hamstrings on the same day, but do quads first and save hamstrings for the end. But then I think the hamstring lift will be kind of compromised because I'll be so tired from quads. Like the amount of fatigue just systemically and like how just tired and out of breath I am after quads compared to after hamstrings. It's kind of night and day. That's sort of why I used to do chest and back on the same day and I split them up because, you know, I, I'd finish chest first and I'd be strong, you know, I'd be fresh because all I had was mu one muscle group. But then by the time I moved on to back, I could tell back was kind of a scrappier lift. Like I'm already kind of tired. I literally just did, you know, eight or so super hard chest sets and chest is not a small muscle group. It's not as big as your back, of course, but it's reasonably, you know, fatiguing. I wouldn't be so concerned with multiple muscle groups in one day if they were a lot smaller. Like arms together, perfect. Even arms and shoulders, or adding arms like after chest, just because they're, I mean, they're just smaller. They require less, well, let's just say fatigue to work them. You know, they're not as brutal on your whole system. But getting back to uh, sort of what Samson was saying, because I'm really looking at, two completely opposite approaches to the gym. Because when we were there, we were with Hollingshead and Douda. And Samson, you know, he's training a little lighter, really squeezing. Like, of course, he's still using a substantial amount of weight, but he's focusing more so on weight he could really control. And he hits failure by way of just not being able to move anymore. And, you know, like hitting failure with a 20-pound dumbbell. Because you squeeze it extra hard, and you get to a point where you just 
your muscles aren't firing anymore. Whereas somebody like Hollingshead, and I think me a little bit, we were kind of, you know, more of a load based workout where if you offer me 20 pound dumbbell curls to failure versus 60 pound dumbbell curls to failure, I'm probably going to get pick the 60 pounder just because the tension, I really think the mechanical tension and just the damage from actually lifting heavier weights, it is going to do something for sure. And then of course you got to remember these guys have been lifting for, you know, 20 years or like 10, 15 years already. So they've kind of already built their foundation. And that's another thing that I think people kind of underestimate is the fact that, you know, what someone could be promoting or advertising as their training style currently, it may not have been what they've been doing this entire time. I mean, I think my training style now is decently good for me, but it wasn't always like this. When I was a beginner, I was doing the weirdest workouts. I had a I had like a Google Drive with a bunch of weird splits and it was like quads and triceps, hamstrings and shoulders, it was like chest and something I can't even really remember at this point. But just you know, trying different shit. And I think at the end of the day, it's not worth overthinking too much. You know, because I'm talking to all these guys, I'm like, how did you, I, think I was talking to Ian Valera, I'm like, you know, what, what, what were you doing when you were bulking up? You know, these, I mean, these are like upper... 280 pounders and I'm like yeah you know I've done some heavier sets for a while and done more volume lighter work I think at the end of the day as long as you do hard sets regardless of the style per se like if you're doing a hard set of bench with 315 or 185 as long as you hit muscular failure you can really feel that your chest is getting worked and not too many secondary muscles then I think you're good you know don't sweat it too much you're gonna lose sight of the forest staring at one tree. And by that I mean you know, getting lost in the real nitty gritty details of it. It's kind of going to set you up for a failure to launch, you know? And especially for the beginner, like if you're super concerned about training perfectly and making sure like, oh, oh well, if I'm, if I'm going to work out, I have to do it absolutely perfectly. And, you know, Jeff Nippard says that, I'm not knocking him, but I mean like guys who really know their shit you do, and it would make sense too. You would want to make sure that your training is as good as possible. But I think the disconnect that people have with that is the fact that that's not something you can learn or like plan out for yourself ahead of time. It's really something that you're just going to kind of adapt your training to as you lift, you know? So pick a basic push pull legs routine, maybe 10 sets per workout or, you know, whatever, nothing groundbreaking do it for a few months and as you become a more experienced lifter and not just an experienced lifter but you become more experienced lifting with your own build you'll start to kind of you know see what ends up working for you and what you like more and I think that's half of it you know anybody can explain away any training style with all sorts of bro logic like you know somebody could say the heavier sets are much better because you're gonna have more tension in the lengthened part of the rep and you'll still have a solid contraction because you have more mechanical tension. Uh, and then one thing Samson was really hyping up was the squeezing, burning feeling at the top of every rep. Like if you watch the video, almost every set we do, it was like we hold it for a moment, squeeze, then back down. Hold it, really squeeze, come back down. And of course I got pumped to shit. So I do think I'm going to implement that a little bit more. But... You know, I think half of it is just if you're doing a workout style that you like, you're going to be able to do it better, you know? If you have a class, like let's say you love math class, you're probably going to do better in math just because you're going to be more interested, you're going to be more focused. And if you hate fucking history, guess what? You're probably going to do shit at history, even if you have the same aptitude for both. So, as long as you work out hard, I think you're all right. Don't, uh, don't get too lost in the details. And sometimes I do that too. Like, I, even today I'm having like a deep introspective reflection. Like, oh man, how should, should I, should I completely flip my training style around and do more only just squeezing sets? Like, I mean, I wasn't like so concerned that I was saying it like that in my head, but yeah, sort of. And it's like, I eh, just, just keep lifting hard. As long as you're progressing, you're definitely doing something right. And that's not just training either. You know, don't, um... Don't put all your eggs in one basket in terms of where you think 
your results are coming from. Because sure, training is one part of it, but if your sleep is shit, no wonder you're going to be plateaued and you're not going to be, you know, progressively overloading your sets. And you're not going to get bigger or stronger. You're not recovering enough. And then if you're not eating enough food, you're not going to have the energy to support, you know, hypertrophy, muscle growth. That doesn't just happen, you know. Even eating enough food to main gain, you're still in a surplus. So that is something which you kind of have to actively be doing. Unless you naturally have a super high appetite where eating a ton of food just comes like completely natural to you. Like to the point where you have a seriously hard time dieting down because uh, you got a fucking black hole in your gut and you just got to fucking chow down all the time. So for someone like that, bulking up, no problem. If you combine him with a good amount of rest and reasonable training, he's going to fucking blow up. But for the most part, of course, the average person can have an average appetite. And for him to eat enough food to be gaining weight, it is like a physical task, right? Because the whole point of a calorie surplus is you're eating more calories than your body needs to stay the same weight per day, which means you're going to eat more than you're hungry for. So that's kind of the trick. If you're not, not that this is like an exact rule, but if you're trying to bulk up and you can tell that throughout the day, can, you're kind of consistently feeling hungry, I think you may not be eating enough calories. And then other way around, if you're trying to diet down and you're never feeling hungry, I can almost guarantee nine times out of 10, you're just eating too many calories because that's the same thing, you know, bulking up or cutting down, it is a challenge and there are going to be drawbacks when it comes to, you know, the way that your routine is going to be. But if you can't deal with those for the sake of the you know, result that you're going to get from it, look, if you can't handle the uncomfortability of eating a lot of food in the bulk, or if you just can't deal with being hungry when you're dieting down, then there's no problem with that. But just, you can't expect to get the results from either case. So it's kind of a give and take, you know, you've got two internal desires, like two internal motivators. Like right now, my motivator to not eat so much food is kind of here because eating a ton, it is kind of, it's just a hassle, but my motivator to grow muscle and get bigger exceeds it. So even though I may look at a meal like this and be like, ah, fuck, this is a, this is a tough plain food. I'm not really super excited about this. I know that it's going to translate to results in my training. So I kind of get excited about it. Yeah. I'm not right now, but sometimes if I'm eating something and I can tell I'm really not hungry, I just said this in a, like a few videos ago, I'll literally play <laughs> like hype music, like eye of the tiger kind of shit and just fucking chow down, pretend I'm in like a workout edit, just so I can get a little bit more excited about the food. But whatever you gotta do to get it down or to not get it down, you know, and just slam like Coke Zeros all day. And if it works, it works. But yeah, reasonably, well, yeah, tomorrow will be busy, but not as busy as the expo. So I'm sure there'll be all sorts of pictures tagged on the Instagram account. I always scan through those. So if you were at the expo and we got a picture and you posted it, I can guarantee I saw it. Because there's only so many. Like, even though there are thousands of people, only a few of them are posting the pictures. And honestly, I wish more of them would. It's kind of, it's just fun for me to look back at them. But I'm going to sit here, finish this. Go, well, actually, I got to go shower. I fucking, I feel so gross right now. And then probably come back for another one of these. And that'll be the end of it. So I will see you tomorrow for hamstrings. <laughs>